Good morning to the Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, online and TV15 viewers, radio listeners via TEL TV+, St. Martin Gov Radio 1079 FM, and respective radio stations island-wide. I'm Charity Dunker, and welcome to the Live Council Ministers Press Briefing for today, Wednesday, August 17, 2022. At this time, I'd like to welcome the Honorable Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, Dr. Anders Rudolph Samuel. Thank you, Ms. Donker, and good morning to you, and good morning to DCOM. Good morning to the members of the media here. Good morning to our Prime Minister, and good morning to the people of St. Martin. I would like to inform the public that the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth, and Sports published a tender for the development of a digital student transformation system, transportation system. The information session for this tender was held on August 5th, 2022, during which the participants indicated the desire to present a demo on the system that they will be offering. In order to accommodate this request, it has been agreed to postpone the deadline for submission of bids by one week. Therefore, the ultimate deadline for submission of bids for the student transportation management system has been extended to Friday, August 26, 2022. Prospective service providers who have an interest in participating in the bid are asked to contact Ava Smith Verbruggen at ava.smith Verbruggen at stmartingov.org. And the telephone number you can call is 54 5694. I would also like to inform the public that I will be having a meeting with the Catholic School Board regarding the alleged harassment at the St. Dominic High School. Schools has to be a safe place, and everyone who are in our schools daily, especially our students, must be able to feel safe at all times during school. So I have called to regulate a meeting, and this meeting will take place follow up to the meeting and what has been discussed will be um, brought to the public also. The third point I want to talk about this morning has to do with the topic of vacation pay. After the pandemic, we have had to deal with three laws. And that had to do with us needing liquidity support from the Netherlands. The first law had to deal with cutting the salaries of the elected officials, which is the ministers and the parliamentarians, by 25%. The second law had to do with reducing the salary of persons who were making more than 30% higher than the prime minister. And the third one had to do with the 12.5%, which was the solidarity, um, the solidarity, how I will call it, support or contribution from the government workers and the semi-government workers. In 2020, when this all started, a request went out to the school boards, and I'm talking about the subsidized school boards, to indicate to them on this law that was taking effect. And the law did not take place yet in 2020. So the subsidized school boards, they did go ahead and pay out the vacation pay when government did not do so. Then in 2021, again, the subsidized school boards paid out the vacation pay in June, July, but the law went into effect in October 2021, retroactive to 2020. 
So in 2022, which is now, the subsidized school boards are not paying out the vacation pay. But that all has to do with the fact that they are now taking into consideration that the law exists. The question is, in 2020, government did not pay the full vacation pay. So in 2021, they paid the other half of 2020. So the civil servants and the school teachers of government received vacation pay for 2020. And now in 2022, the civil servants and the government teachers also receive vacation pay for 2022. They did not receive for 2021. When we compare what happened in the subsidized schools with what happened with the government, you would notice that both government and subsidized schools paid out two vacation pays. It means when you, when you really look at the information, there is no discrimination taking place where, let's say, government schools or school board and teachers and civil servants did not got paid more than the subsidized schools. So I will repeat for clarity. In 2020, the subsidized school board paid vacation pay. Government also paid for 2020. For 2021, the subsidized school boards paid vacation pay. Government did not. In 2022, government paid vacation pay and the subsidized school board did not. So both, <laughs> if you look at three times, both groups receive vacation pay two times. The question at this moment is, does government have to give money to the subsidized school boards to pay out vacation pay? No, government does not have to give money, especially to the subsidized school boards to pay out vacation pay. And in 2020, when the subsidized school boards paid the vacation pay, they received their full subsidy. In 2022, 2021, they also received their full vacation pay. And in 2022, they are also receiving subsidy, sorry, their full subsidy. And right now in 2022, they are also receiving their full subsidy. So the subsidy of the subsidized school boards was not cut in 2020, was not cut or reduced in 2021, and is not being reduced at this moment. I want to indicate that it is necessary for us to give the correct information to the public so that the public can understand this issue. I thank you, and I await any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, for your opening remarks. At this time, I'd like to welcome and invite the Honorable M Minister of Public Health, Social Development and Labor, Omar Atli, to address you. Thank you. Good day to the members of the media, the Honorable Prime Minister and my colleagues, Minister of Education. I'd like to start today with some TIAT-related matters. Um, I'm happy to announce, and I would like to announce to the public, that the Population Census 2022 is set to start real soon. We are looking to start at the end of September. The census is to take place every 10 years. The last one was taken in 2011, but however, due to the pandemic, we were unable to conduct this in 2021. Some of the questions related to this census would be, who are we, how many are we, where do we live, and how do we live? From the population census, we will get information as population density, demographics of the population, school participation rate, dropout rate, employment rate, health conditions of the population, estimated of the household costs, the household income, transportation, quality of the household. A uh, mini census took place of 1,135 1, persons and 504 households. 
out of that, we were, there were some preliminary results. As we, as we suspected, we live in a society where people of various backgrounds were found. 32% of the participants, the mini participants, interviewed were from St. Martin. When we looked into the estimated average household um, cost, more analysis will be done to determine and estimate the cost in a particular household, looking into the vulnerable, such as a single mother, elderly, and so on. Surprisingly, majority of the household pays, household pays rent that is less than $500. There seems to be a direct correlation between the length of time that they are renting and the low rent. This could cause, this could indicate that the landlords are not increasing rent regularly. Another interesting fact is that less than 500 rent is paid primarily to studios in which sometimes we have found up to five to six persons living in a studio. The biggest source of discomfort for residents' neighborhoods are the presence of rats, vermin, such as mosquitoes. Approximately 99% of the households are connected to water and electricity. I mind you, this is from the preliminary um, census that we took place out of 504 households, over 1,000 participants. 76% of the respondents considered their health very good. 17.4 had high blood pressure, 10% had diabetes, 6% had asthma, as these were the top three non-communicable disease mentioned and suffered from St. Martin. Almost 45% personal vehicle, use vehicle to get to school, use a personal vehicle to get to school. The unemployment rate of these persons were 9.6%, and this shows a decrease from December 2021 of 10.8%. It is very important that the public cooperates with the enumerators that comes around. As you can see, it provides vital, vital information. The Ministry of ASI is also working on a rental subsidy. Um, so information here can help the Ministry of ASI. This information can also help the Ministry of AZ when it comes to cost of living assessment and analysis. So this is a very, very detailed um, census, as you can see, so I would ask the public and plead with the public to cooperate when they come to you. I would like to touch on um, VSR-related matters. There was an image circulating on Facebook, and also, while I don't necessarily react to images on Facebook, the gentleman reached out to me personally, and he reached out to the department. So because of that, reason I will address the matter. Um, the issue is being handled. The gentleman was notified of what all documents need to be submitted to the Labor Department for the labor dispute. Um, so I have here, this was published in the Lance Courant, the Labor Dispute and Complaint Procedure. I just go over some of the procedures. This was published in 2021. For those that are having similar situations, there is a way for this to be handled. I think we are all emotional and at times with the frustration we lash out. And the first thing in response is to blame or bash government without responding, without corresponding with government in the right manner. However, the matter is being handled. But for those that are going through the situation, first thing, the um, front office reception is responsible for scheduling an appointment. Once the appointment is there, the client will appear. The client will enter the booth, hand over all required documents. The persons, the personnel will go through the document, ensure that all documents are in place. Once all documents are in place, the checklist proof of registration will be uploaded in our CRM. The intake officer issues proof of registration to the client along with the original documents. The section head will then ensure that the complaint is completed and all required documents have been uploaded depending on the type of complaint. The labor relation officer will then contact the client and ask if the client wishes to proceed. If the client does not wish to pursue the complaint, the officer, depending on the response of the client, opt to provide information and guidance. 
a lot of people have a fear that the employers will get rid of them. So we then would issue guidance. But I ask people, please do not have this fear. Let's end this abuse by coming forward. If the client still wishes to file a complaint, and if the complaint has been registered correctly, the labor relations officer will inform the employer and will contact for a rebuttal. So these are the processes. This is also published in the Lance Courant 2021 um, media outlets. If you like, we will also post it on the government site for those that have um, issues. And we would, I would ask you to also do the same to assist. I would like to touch on something that seems to be um, um, very, very, very important, so important to the island of St. Martin and to the news medias, um, that we come here day in, week in and week out, and I like to speak for me, and I update the media on stuff that the ministry is working on, and um, we rarely get questioned on what we present, and I must say, Ms. Hadshaw and Ms., uh, Mr. Dick, um, as it relates to me, I, I, I thank you for showing interest in what we present. Um, you contact, you verify, and you present. So up to now, <laughs> I haven't had an issue, Mr. Brown. I don't, we don't have each other's number. But however, um, I, I have to address this matter. Um, this, this, is, this is big news. It's so big that I realized the newspaper published it four times the same article four times with a different name. So in case the whole of St. Martin didn't know, um, yes, um, Malik Atli is my brother. So I guess that's a big news. And you can continue to publish. And the minister of Rumi can defend himself. And he will defend himself today in the meeting at 3 o'clock. He will defend himself. But I realized from the meeting in Parliament that it's not about the ombudsman no more. It's not about the processes. It's not about bringing legislation to better the processes. See, when I was a member of parliament, I brought a motion for us to have a procurement, measure, a procurement policy that would help the people of St. Martin, but we're not doing that. And I realized we moved away from everything and the only thing I heard was Aviana. Well, it's so funny that this is the same person that did hurricane cleanup. I didn't hear anything then. This is the same person that the same Rumi contacted to clean sarcasm. I didn't hear anything then. This is the same person that worked for NRPB and the World Bank that was contracted to do nine houses, but ended up doing over 16 houses because their job was so good and they had to fix not only other works, but works of other contractors. I didn't hear anything then, but I remember I was not in politics then. So then it's not even then, it's about me. So we're playing political games. Okay, good. That's what we're doing, go ahead. Then we want to talk about convicts and being arrested. He's not the first and he's not going to be the last. And I can tell you, don't shake your head at me. I'm going to talk. It's my time to talk. I'm going to tell you, he's not the first and he's not the last. If we go through, 30% of those persons have been convicted before. And guess what? This ensures that they change their life. And the ministry is working on a second chance operation. So I don't know the culture of Ms. Hoffman. But our culture is to ensure and try to curb um, reoccurrence of detention within our system. And the young men that work with the company, a lot of them are repeat offenders and have not been convicted since working there. So again, I'm not here to defend the minister of Rumi. He will do that for himself. But if you need to sell newspapers, and articles, and you need to put my name in every article saying he's the brother, but then I, that he'll be my brother tomorrow, and even if I'm out of politics, he will be my brother then. So there you have it. I just wanted to clear that. So we're acting like Aviana came out of nowhere, but I just wanted to list a little history. So I thank you, and I look forward to any questions from the members of the media. Thank you, Minister Atli, for your opening remarks. At this time, I'd like to welcome and invite the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of General Affairs, Severia Jacobs, to address you. Good morning. Good morning to my colleague ministers. Good morning to, of course, the members of the media, both present and following. Good morning, Ms. Dunker and the members of DCOM. Thank you for your service to the general public of St. Martin. First of all, I'd like to start off with condolences to all families who over the past few weeks have um, laid their loved ones to rest. Um, I know due to my absence that I missed a couple 
but I would like to just with this statement um, ensure that the general public as well as these families know that our prayers as a government remain with you as well as that of the people of St. Martin as you go through your challenges. Be faithful, be strong, uh, this too shall pass. I'd also like to take this time to congratulate Lady Madam Ruby Butte, who was honored this past Sunday by the Coffee and Soda Biscuit Association at the gardens in Bellevue. I must say it was indeed a wonderful manifestation of love and honor to an honorable lady, a very heartfelt tribute. The Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, myself, His Excellency the Governor, were there in representation of the government. Uh, French dignitaries as well as the general population and indeed it was good to see that she was honored as a living legend and cultural icon for St. Martin. I'm humbled to have been able to also extend a few words of congratulations on behalf of the people of St. Martin and I look forward to her life and works um, continuing to be a blessing to us all and that we will continue as a country through initiatives such as these in the uh, private sector or in the community, as well as via government to honor our legends, both living and those who have passed on. I'd like to update that um, as shareholder, the Council of Ministers requested information uh, based on what was the ongoing challenges faced at the NVGEBE. Uh, we have received over the past two weeks some information, quite a slew of information as a matter of fact, and the requisite extraordinary general shareholders meeting is scheduled to take place this Friday. So once that meeting has been held and we have been able to clear up some, um, some let's say some challenges or how they are being dealt with, we will then be able to, as GEBE and shareholder, give further information. The Minister of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, Minister Samuel, already touched on the safety in schools and the upcoming meeting with the school board. But I would like to reiterate that as government, it is our responsibility to ensure the safety of our students, teachers and staff within our schools, together with the school's management and boards. Any allegations, any whatsoever of misconduct or any inappropriate behavior must be properly investigated and I know the Minister of Justice isn't here, but she's also doing her due diligence within the justice chain to ensure that any and all allegations are properly followed up within the justice chain. I look forward to uh, hearing from the Minister, of course, about the upcome outcome of the meeting. With my years of experience in education field, I must say, though, that I would like to caution the general public about the manner in which these allegations are being discussed publicly, especially with names being called, etc. Why? This is not meant to muzzle anyone. We live in a new age, yes, of social media, where everyone has a voice and everyone feels that with freedom of speech, we can say what we want. But I know in close settings, when we have allegations of any type of misconduct in schools and you bring in the professionals, the social workers and the psychologists, there are people monitoring the reactions of the children, the minors, because we only know of what we know. There may be more who are not speaking. And so when this is being discussed the way it is being done publicly, who is actually monitoring those who may also be victims of these allegations, whether these or other allegations, because Hearing about other person's plight, and you've also experienced it at some point in your life, can bring up a lot of negative emotions and feelings by those children who may at this point even be adults. So I think it is much more far reaching than many are aware. It is a very serious situation which has our attention. But I would just like to ask the people on St. Martin, there are minors involved. And I do not think that this continuing of bandying around allegations that thus far have not been finalized, allegations or there are no charges brought, et cetera, can also have a negative impact on the current and or potential other victims. They may now feel, I don't want my name out there. I'm not going to say anything. And what we are trying to do as a government is break the silence. Break the silence by following the, the processes to ensure that we can get to convictions. Because when we do these types of things and then you do not have enough proof to come to a conviction, it is then discouraging to the next victim to open their mouth. So with that being said, 
I want to, again, speak out to all parents and all children, students, teachers, all who are involved with youth who may not be able to speak up for themselves. Listen. Listen, report, and follow the trail of the report, but always with the interest to protect the privacy of that individual youth. It is very, very important. We live in a very small society and community, and if laws need to be, how you say, uh, strengthened to even further protect them, then so that is our job as government and legislators to do so. But it cannot be that these children, with the interest to solve the problem for them, are further jeopardized by the manner in which it is being discussed publicly. So I look forward to getting the updates on how these complaints are being handled and that they are following the correct trajectory in the interest of safety and security for all our children. And as parents, I encourage you to do your due diligence to ensure the safety of your children as well. As a Ministry of General Affairs, we have been working diligently to provide a framework for the electoral reform. As such, as mentioned before, a survey was created <clears throat> whereby the people of St. Martin can access as well as provide input. So over 300 persons have already heeded the call. I encourage the general population to make use of this opportunity and also look forward to the coming public discussions that will be happening in various community halls uh, where we have invited and will be inviting other stakeholders who have the information or who have opinions on the matter to share so that the general public um, can take decisions for themselves in terms of, here, where do we want to go and have their input as well. So I look forward to that. We've also reached out to the Parliament of St. Martin and other stakeholders, so I expect this to be a very interesting topic of discussion within the community, not just for today, but for uh, all future elect elections that would be happening. Uh, there was also a, in Khazondan Stuck, as they would say, a letter to the editor, or to me via the editor from a Mr. Bannis in the newspapers yesterday. <clears throat> I received an update from the post office in terms of the cost to send um, registered mail and or the like. The challenge with registered mail is that it cannot be tracked and traced, and that's why the post office is doing express mail, which is easier tracked. And the price is 65 guilders per kilo, with an extra 10 guilders as the weight increases. Uh, the, uh, the post office director, Ms. Gums, uh, has also made contact with the gentleman in question and um, would reiterate that there is a number, 520-2760, public numbers of the post office that can be called to have any concerns dealt with. I'd like to encourage the people of St. Martin to continue to guard our health. I commend the efforts of the Ministry of ASR to bring more health awareness. I know we are collaborating with culture, with sport, with the expo that's coming up as well. And for me, it's important that um, though we do these cultural, these cultural and sport expos every year, that now health is involved. We are trying to improve the general health of our population. We've seen what COVID-19 has exposed, that people with underlying conditions are still having medical problems up to today. In fact, they didn't know they had these type of challenges. So guard our health, let's eat better, let's move more, and also our mental health as well. Get tested if you need to, and be careful with the communicable diseases within our community. Um, we are in the hurricane season. We're getting close to the peak, and I'd like to remind you as Minister of General Affairs to continue your preparations and encourage you to visit our government page to admitiosaintmartin.com. Tune in to St. Martin Gov Radio 1079 on tips, four tips on how to prepare and how to protect yourself and your family. We, as emergency support functions, are doing all we have to do to ensure our plans are in place in the various ministries, and we will continue to be vigilant to ensure that families are safe, especially our most vulnerable. I look forward to any further questions, uh, Ms. Dunker, from the media, and will offer any clarification as needed. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Prime Minister Jacobs, for your opening remarks. If you have just joined us, you're watching the Live Council Minister's Press Briefing for today, Wednesday, August 17, 2022. 
Thank you for joining us. We now move on to the question and answer session, whereby I'd like to invite and welcome Ms. Bibi Hadshaw of SMN News. You have the floor. Welcome, Bibi. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, colleagues, and good morning, Minister. Before I ask my question, I'd like to remind the Minister of Education. Minister, when you made your presentation, I was looking forward um, to hear about the possible solution um, to the vacation pay that the Deputy Prime Minister um, promised last week. If by chance you forget to give us that, kindly do so because we are looking forward for that information today. Uh, my question is for the Minister of VSA, Minister Otley. Minister, um, I have received quite a number of complaints, people coming to me, elderly, all kinds of people with all kinds of medical concerns that um, they are being given generic medication by pharmacies and doctors. Doctors are even forcing uh, generic medications on the patients. They claim to have allergies. I want to make clear, Minister, I'm fully aware of, of generic medications. We get them on the front side. It's cheaper, but sometimes it does have allergies. Um, so this is one of the, the, the major complaints that patients are having, and they're saying that SZV is looking to save at least four million by giving out um, generic medication. Isn't there any other way that SZV can save money? For example, that huge building they're renting, they're not even open to the public for over the past two years. Can't they move into something smaller, save money there, and not compromise the health of our people? And can you also tell us, Minister, uh, since we are dealing with SZV, the HR contract, that contract is due to expire either this month or next month. Do you know if SZV did any recruitment to hire a local HR? Thank you, Misha. Good questions. Um, definitely, I'm glad you touched on the generic medicine. This is something, a complaint. Well, I haven't received much complaints. Um, I'm not saying that they're there, but persons are not sending their complaints forward to SZV when we um, do the analysis on it, we receive very minimal complaints. However, I do know that the situation exists, and that's why, before signing the advice, um, it was also stipulated that if you have an adverse reaction to the generic medicine, there's a process that you go through. One, you would then need to consult your doctor, your GP, who would then have to verify this. Once this is verified, the information then needs to be sent to the doctor of SZV, who would then conduct an analysis. Um, if it is indeed that the allergy is true, then you will be allowed to get the original medicine. Um, with generics, as you know, as French side has it, it, people think generic means imitation. No, it's not. It's, it's sometimes it's the same products, different um, brand name. For instance, like in, in America, I, I can speak personally. I have, um, here we used to use Clarinase. Now we changed to something else. In America, it was Claritine. So same ingredients, different names, you know, um, different manufacturers. So therefore, that is the synopsis of that. So persons can consult your GP. GP then verifies there's a process goes with, between the GP and SZV. And once that process is indeed verified, you would um, indeed be able to get your original medicine. That was taken into consideration before signing. Um, we have a lot of um, cost containment measures that we're working on with SZV and re, um, revenue generating measures. Um, I'm glad you touched on the building because as a way spends upwards of two million on the building that will never be there. So um, recently there was a signing in the, in the press between the Minister of Rummy and SFA where the land, the deed was signed over for the land in Cahill. A meeting was held between myself, Minister of Finance, Rummy, and the Cahill community um, to sh show them the possible renderings and get their approval in which it was given thus far. So the process has started for SZV to build their own, um, their own building, which would save them upwards of some millions. So that is indeed the process, and um, we are pushing to start immediately. So the process is ongoing immediately. When it comes to the HR, a Ken, very good question. I will look into this and um, I can send you the answer in writing or if you want it publicly next week, I can do that. But I will look into that matter and update you. 
to address the question of Ms. Shaw related to what the Deputy Prime Minister mentioned, uh, the Deputy was in his capacity as Minister of uh, the Prime Minister at the time. Uh, we did have our meeting of the Council yesterday to address the letter that had been received by me or sent to me uh, from the White 2 President related to the discrimination, et cetera, that has been mentioned. The minister explained that there is no discrimination, but I would like to reiterate that uh, the Minister of Finance uh, did visit and have discussions with several school boards. There's still one or two pending. However, there is more clarity now as to what their options are. So I think that will clarify. Um, there has been, let's call it, gaps in the communication where the understanding of what exactly can be done and what can be executed. As you know, at least one school board did pay out uh, partial uh, vacation pay. And so others are seeing what opportunities that they have in terms of how they will fill in the 12.5% cut if they had not done so as yet. So there is much more clarity on the options that have been shared by the Minister of Finance. And so we look forward to receiving the updated submissions from them as to how they will apply it. And then they will, of course, communicate to their staff, etc. And by this, I hope my response letter was sent to the union yesterday to that letter that was sent to me with the updates uh, as has been shared with the public right now. Thank you, Prime Minister, and also thank you, Minister Atley and Bibi, for your question. Moving on to member of the media, Mr. Lyndon Brown, you have the floor. Good morning to the people of St. Martin and the ministers that are present here today. Well, question to the minister, the Prime Minister. I had this question from since last week, um, Minister. I find it unfortunate, Minister, a letter will be sent to you um, by the, the leader of the WICSO and emphasize discrimination. Um, now, uh, Minister Samuel, finally, given in depth of the, um, the procedure, I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it's far, because it's like discrimination and negativity is on the horizon. Um, I don't think the, the, the Prime Minister will intentionally try to stop um, vacation pay and, you know, um, for the subsidized teacher. And the, um, the letter from um, Mr. Strode, I find it was um, unfortunate um, to classify the Prime Minister as um, the emphasis, me, Lyndon, discrimination. Proceed to your question, please. So, um, Minister Samuel, um, could you just give Richak again? And, and the letter you mentioned, something recent, just recheck again so that the people can clearly understand. Um, initially, Mr. Brown started with me, so I don't know. Um, I believe just before Mr. Brown asked a question, I clarified um, what steps are being taken. Uh, there needs to be close and let's call it close communication between government, uh, all subsidized entities moving forward, continued updates on um, all the measures that have been in place. We will continue to follow up on that um, because of course at the end of the day, when there is unclarity, there can be misinterpretations. Um, the union has their role to play and they will continue to play their role. I have responded to the letter that was addressed to me. Yes, I think it should have been addressed to the Ministry of Education, Culture, Youth and Sport, but it was addressed to me. And as leader of government, I've responded to that letter after having an in-depth discussion within the Council of Ministers on this topic. Again, it stems from cost-cutting measures that were government approved, approved in parliament, um, went through the whole rigmarole um, with the Ombudsman review of the legislation and the Constitutional Court. and we are currently trying to lift it. So we are in that process. So we are totally in solidarity with understanding the situation. Um, but the minister already explained the differences in what happened in 21 and what happened this year. And we are currently in good discussions to come to an amicable solution for all concerned. So I look forward to, again, the submissions from the school boards that will clarify how they have uh, filled in the 12.5% and uh, we will be able to move forward from there. And I'm hoping that the unions will also be clear on what that is based on the response sent in the letter. 
Thank you, Minister, and also thank you, Lyndon. Moving on to Mr. Andrew Dick of TV Carib, you have the floor. Thank you, Ms. Dunker. Good morning to the ministers. This is a question for the Minister of BSR. Uh, Minister, how much um, money has been made from the $15 COVID insurance, uh, if you can get that information to me? And um, are there plans to remove this now um, and make it, maybe make it as a visitor's tax? Uh, if yes, when? And if no, why not? Thank you, Mr. Dick. Uh, I can get the information for you. I don't know. It's a, a, lot, a lot of visitors. So I would have to get that information for you. It's actually a TIAT related, but I am TIAT, so I'll get it for you. Um, yes, the plan is indeed. We are working on the, the legal trajectory. Um, I would like to say the... I don't want to say the correct way. So we are building off of the uh, MP Bryson's initiative. Um, we had some complaints from the, some remarks from the Council of Advice. So we have now adapted it, adjusting it according to the remarks to making it, to make it more feasible for the country. The plan is to adapt a health um, levy or a tourist levy in which the funds then can be used directly for the benefit of whether it's um, health-related um, products, the government, and so forth. So right now, we're, we had our second or third meeting. Um, TIAT, there's a committee with TIAT, a committee with Justice, Finance is involved in VSA. VSA is spearheading this um, levy process, and we're now figuring out all the intricacies and what we need to do to get um, the health levy or the tourist levy, we haven't decided the name, rolling. But it is coming. That is the plan, indeed. Thank you, Minister, and also thank you, Andrew. Ms. Bibi Hadsha of SMN News, you have the floor. Your mic, Bibi. My question is for the Prime Minister. Prime Minister Jacobs, can you tell me... Um, what is the connection between St. Martin Investment Agency to APS? And who is the manager director there? And who is also the project manager, the high level project manager for the EDMP projects that is paid by NRPB? I'd like to know the person that is the connection between the St. Martin Investment Agency to APS as well as who is the high-level high level project manager for the EDMP projects that is paid by the NRPB. And Prime Minister, you may want to know why I'm asking this. I'm asking this because right now, our colleagues, you, the other Prime, the, the minister is explaining the situation of the vacation pay and how much teachers are suffering. Well, I did some research last week as I was working on an article, and I was surprised to see a particular person having at least three lucrative contracts. And I'd like to know how fair this is to the people of St. Martin. Thank you, Ms. Shaw. Uh, the St. Martin Investment Agency is an investment agency established out of APS to be able to handle its investments. Um, the, I believe it is Mr. Richards is the director. Uh, that is something that is outside of government. We don't appoint the agency's members, et cetera. So you're talking about in terms of government, several uh, contracts. When we have things that we put out and people contract for them and they go through the process, that is what it is. Who wins, wins, as long as they can do the work. Um, the emergency debris management um, project is being handled via the uh, NRPB, and they use their procurement processes, and they hire according to that. So if Mr. Richards has also been hired as the, the tracker of that project and can handle the work, whether it's lucrative or not, it is the contract that he won from two different agencies. So whether your research showed that and that is a fact, then that is a fact. Is it, it is for government and or the NRPB and or in this case the SMEA to determine whether the work is being executed according to the contract and hold him accountable as such. That's had absolutely nothing to do with what is going on with vacation pay or not. That is not coming from the same part. We must not um, confuse things. 
Minister Samuel, you'd like to add any? No? All right. Moving on to uh, Mr. Lyndon Brown of BCN TV. Lyndon, you have the floor. Question to Minister Omar. Minister Omar, as, as it is pending that um, marijuana will be legalized maybe sometime soon, parents are concerned, um, seeing right now, as I speak, a lot of children are consuming the substance. And what negative will it be on, on the children of St. Martin? Well, definitely. What we approved was the RFP request for proposal. So with this request for proposal, a tender will go out in which the company would then assess our situation, have meeting with stakeholders, parents, churches, schools, and then assess the situation and determine the best way to introduce this new system to St. Martin. Um, as we see now, there's um, not that it's... it's a lot of people are saying that we're legalizing it as if, <laughs> as if we're going to legalize it tomorrow. No, we're going to do our due diligence, involve our stakeholders, and see how the process will take place. All right. Thank you, Minister Otley. Mr. Andrew Dick of uh, TV Carib, you have the floor. Yes. Um, thank you, Charity. My question is for the Minister of um, Education. Um, how much has been accumulated from the one cent levied on gas for development of sports? Thank you, Mr. Andrew, for that question. Um, yesterday in the Council of Ministers, we have discussed the issue with the Minister of Finance, and he promised that he would get me that information before next week. So by next week, I will have that information for the public. So it, the intention is to continue to be transparent, and that will be done. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, and also thank you, Andrew. For our third and final round of questions, Ms. Bibi Hart Shah of SMN News, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, um, Charity. Um, Minister um, Samuel, in your opening remarks, you spoke about having um, planning to have a meeting with the Catholic School Board now that an article surfaced and there's a talk show about this issue. But if I remember correctly, Minister, we asked about that several times here in the press briefing. My question to you, though, why wouldn't um, you as the minister um, try to get KPSM Juvenile, an independent body that should that to investigate the allegations that took place at the, at, at the school that involves a principal whose contract was not renewed. And bear in mind that this principal, whose name is now in public domain, he was suspended since February. Why not recruit KPSM to the, the, the juvenile department to at least conduct a fair and balanced investigation? Why meet with them? Thank you, Bibi, for the question. Bibi, the idea is to get to the bottom of what is really happening in this situation. And I believe one of the first places to start would be at the school board that is responsible for the school that is being mentioned. Um, it doesn't mean that other entities and other parties and other professionals will not be contacted it is just to indicate where I am starting. So I will do my best to get to the, to the bottom of this and to also indicate that it is very important to me that these type of things do not happen, do not continue, and that even though in our community um, persons do not come forward and do not make reports, there should be a way that we should still be able to look into these matters. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, and also thank you, Bibi. Ms. Uh, Lyndon Brown of, oh, one more, sorry. Question Minister. to the Minister. No, hold on, Lyndon, sorry, okay. Minister. Sorry, I just wanted to add that um, I mentioned it briefly before, the Minister of Justice is having meetings within the justice chain also to follow up on steps to be taken in this regard. And as Minister mentioned, if the law does not provide, because in the past, also with abuse against women, 
the police were not able to act unless the female or the person, the victim, actually filed a complaint. And so that question is out there as to why does someone have to file a complaint in such a case as being mentioned now, once the allegations are out there. So the Minister of Justice is following up within the Ministry um, of Justice to see uh, what steps can be taken in this regard as well, and that steps are taken in this regard as well. Thank you, Prime Minister, and thank you, Bibi, for your question. Also, I'd uh, like to invite at this time Mr. Lyndon Brown of BCN TV. You have the floor. Yes. I was saying question to the Minister of um, Education. Minister of Education, you are an example. You went abroad years ago to study, and you came back. Minister, Minister this negative stigma that most of the time you are hearing people are saying, but students who go to study, I'm not coming back because there's nothing to come back here for. Minister. So that's why I mentioned you are example and you was there seeing the student leave the various countries to study. So again and again, I, I want you to expound, Minister, try to erase such a negativity that there's, there's nothing here to come back for. Mr. Brown, thank you for your question. I believe that Students that leave to go abroad, they understand the reason that we invest in them for them to go abroad and study. Now, when a, when, when a student has completed their studies, there are a couple of things that can happen. Some students, as we realize, they stay abroad shortly after their studies in order to do what we will consider um, pick up more um, experience and then they will come back later on. It is always done from our side to encourage students as much as possible when they have completed their study to come back home and that will continue to happen Mr. Brown. Home always have everything that you need so we will continue to make sure that we stay in touch with them and let them know which jobs are available so that they can apply to these jobs and to be able to come back home. Thank you. Also, uh, Minister Otley, you'd like to also add? Thank you. And um, indeed, the plan is to work hand in hand with the educational department and um, using my my capacity as Minister of Labor, what we would like to, what I would like to envision or create, um, and I, this would only be done with the support of the calm interministerial intervention, and stuff like the census will help us do this is create a level per degree um growing up in the, when i was in the states you 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 have a bachelor's degree you you get paid a minimum of this you have a master's degree you get paid a minimum of that i think that is what is needed in saint martin in the future to create a minimum level pay per degree this would incentivize our students to come back home and also incentivize them to further their educations for more lucrative um, job opportunities. So this is indeed something that we're looking forward to within the future. Thank you, Minister, and also thank you, uh, Lyndon. Mr. Andrew Dick, you have our floor for your final question. Thank you, um, Minister of VSA. Considering the short-term contract, um, any update as far as um, dealing with that? Um, Definitely, Mr. Dick. Um, the short-term contract, let's start with the civil code. Um, it's finally, um, we received every, not, I won't want to say finally, like in a bad way, but it has been projected to go into effect. From March, we had issues and there were delays. So finally, it's that um, it was delivered to my desk, it was signed, it'll be delivered to both Justice and the Prime Minister today to be sent to the Governor for the signing of the LBA and the updated civil code will then go into effect. The date that we're looking at is October 1st for this to go into effect. This has stuff like the maternity leave, the extended paternity leave, um, payout, and et cetera, and including a short-term contract, which was amended from three consecutive contracts to two. However, the ministry and I um, don't believe that this deals with the direct issue of the abuse, because there's still that time frame where you can lay someone off for three months in a day and bring them back, and it won't be considered continuous. So therefore, the ministry and I have been meeting every Friday um, and working 
diligently to curb this abuse. I will be present in Parliament very soon to give a presentation on my plans and suggestions moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Minister, and also thank you, Andrew, for your question. Honorable Ministers of the Council, members of the media, online viewers, radio listeners, and uh, this brings us to the end of the Life Council Minister's press briefing for today, Wednesday, August 17, 2022. For rebroadcast, tune into St. Martin Gulf Radio 107.9 FM and also Telem Tel TV Plus, the official Facebook page, Government of St. Martin, YouTube channel, Government of St. Martin, and TV 15 for video on demand. Also log on to the Government of St. Martin YouTube channel. On behalf of the Department of Communication and the Government of St. Martin, I'm Charity Dunker. Thank you very much and do have a pleasant day further.